Hello, Facebook world. Welcome to Como Live, brought to you by the Legacy Amendment. My name is Jill. I'm a zookeeper here in the Hoofstock area. And today we are behind the scenes with the giraffe, and we're also gonna visit the doll sheep and our lesser kudu. And today we're gonna talk about something that's very bittersweet for me. So if you've been to Como in the last couple years, we've really had a hoofstock baby boom. We've had two giraffe calves, a couple zebra foals, We've had a couple lesser kudu calves, and we had two doll sheep lambs this year, which is all really great. They're really fun to watch. However, once they grow up a little bit, they need to move on to a different home. Um, and we move animals for a number of reasons. The main reason is that if we continue a breeding program, we need to move the genetics on. So most of our animals are either involved in the species survival plan, which is the SSP for short, or just a managed population like the doll sheep. So we talk about breeding plans, we talk about genetics, and we, wanna, we want to, in captivity, have the best genetics possible down the road. So when we plan a birth like Penelope or Soda, we wanna move them to a home that they can have a boyfriend or girlfriend in the future to possibly breed. And then we don't have issues with breeding, inbreeding in our population at Como. So when we move animals, we always take into consideration when they would leave their mom naturally. So our giraffe, if you've been with us the last couple weeks, this is Soda and he just celebrated his first birthday. And so that would be a natural time for a male giraffe to move on in the herd. And this Penelope turned two last Friday, so she is ready to move on to her new home. So we move them again at the age of one to two for a couple reasons. Number one, it's a natural separation for mom right around that time. And they're also still very behaviorally flexible. They're very curious. They're, they wanna interact with a new environment. So it would be a good time for them to learn a new zoo, a new keeper staff, new visitors. I would hope they'd come over here to say goodbye to you guys, but maybe not. Maybe we have to go to them. So one of the most common questions we get is how do you move a giraffe? And if you wanna look right behind you, Kelsey, this is our restraint or a chute, a giraffe chute. And it's basically just a hallway. So both of our calves have been trained to walk into this restraint or chute. And what we'll do is we'll back the trailer up right to the exit door. So the morning of their, their move, we'll back the trailer up, we'll open the door, and in theory, they will just walk on. It's never quite as easy as it sounds, but we have had a lot of success with moving calves here at Como. Are you gonna come down and say hi now? And then we can tell them how much, how tall you are. You gotta come through here. So Penelope, like I said, just turned two and I measured her last week and she is just over 11 feet tall. So if you remember, she was one of our shorter giraffe calves. She was born at 5'8". So she has grown quite a bit in her two years. So if you're around Como the next couple weeks, come say goodbye. Um, we've got a lot of movement going on. We'll definitely miss these guys. Like I said, it's very bittersweet for us. One of the most common questions I get is, how do the moms handle it? And I'll tell you, the zookeepers handle it worse than the moms do. We really miss these guys. Um, but like I mentioned, it's a natural time of separation. So both moms have already weaned their calves. We're seeing very little nursing from soda even. So it's, it's a good break for them. Um, they definitely know something's changed, but I think we have to take the human emotion out of it. It's not that their baby left, it's that part of their herd has moved on. Right. We will miss you, pretty girl. So the giraffes, I don't think I mentioned it yet. The giraffes are moving to the Reed Park Zoo in Tucson, Arizona. They are moving together, so they'll be able to spend more time together. So follow them on social media. I know Reed Park does a great job, and I'm sure they will provide updates for us. Hi, mister. So here's Soda, that's some snacks. So Soda, we mentioned, just turned one, and he is measuring at just over 10 feet tall now. So he was born at 6'4". He was one of Clover's tallest calves, and he's now up to 10'3", I believe. 
So we are live inside the doll sheep holding area right now. And one of the things we do before we prepare for a shipment is we have to weigh the animals. It helps whoever is hauling or picking them up to know how big they are, whether we need to use a crate or a trailer. And also it helps us chart their growth. So we are inside holding right now and we are joined by Sunny, who is our first time mom this year. She is two years old and her son Skywalker, who was born May 4th. So he's just about, he's five months right now. So these two will leave in the next couple weeks. Um, both Skywalker and Nimbus are going to be traveling together. They're moving to Hemker Park Zoo in Freeport, Minnesota. There's Nimbus. So these two were born about a week apart. Nimbus was born May 25th and Skywalker was May 4th, or April 25th, it was April. Um, and they will be, like I said, moving together. These guys are getting harder and harder to tell apart. So if you look really closely, Skywalker is just a hair taller. So he's on the left right now. Um, Nimbus is just a little bit shorter. But ironically, they weigh the same, and they've actually weighed the same throughout their growth, which is kind of cool. So if they come over here, they could have some treats and get on the scale for me, but I think they're being a little camera shy this morning. So doll sheep are only found at a handful of zoos in North America, um, and these guys are not part of a species survival plan or an SSP like the giraffe and the kudu are but they are part of a managed population. Um, and we, we often get asked, you know, why do you send the babies away? And it's bittersweet. We have to send them away if we want to continue the flock structure with their mom and their dad, because as they grow older, they are boys, they're going to want to breed. And we don't want them to breed with their mom or their sister or their aunties. Um, so we put them in a situation that they can thrive in and they could possibly have future babies of their own. And so how we decide when to move the animals, we look at in the wild when they would leave mom. And with these guys, we found that they typically leave mom between the ages of five to six months, and they wouldn't necessarily leave the flock. They would be hanging out with their aunts or their other siblings. Um, in this case, they'll get to hang out with each other. And I believe there's a couple sheep that they're gonna go visit once they move to their new home. You can get on the scale for me, bud. Your mom's real good at it. The other thing we look at when we're moving animals, being a northern zoo, we look at the temperatures. And so we tend to move a lot of animals in early fall because it's not too hot. So we're not worried about stressing the animal out in the trailer if they have to move a long distance. And we're also not worried about ice or snow on the road because that could also be dangerous for them. Um, the other thing we look at is next year's breeding season. So Sylvester, our male sheep, who's peeking in the doorway right now, he's getting ready to court the ladies again to make some babies for next year. So we need to think about that behavior. And with these two being males, they're not a challenge till Sylvester this year, but just being in the way and possibly being on the the end of a headbutt from him could be dangerous to their health so we take that all into account Can you sneak on there kid i want to see how much you weigh okay, All right, so we are up to 70 pounds. So these guys were born right around 10 pounds and in five months, they've gained 60 pounds. So I think Nimbus when he was on was about 68. So you're 68 and 70 pounds. So welcome back. Now we are live inside the back of our kudu holding. So this is the zebra kudu barn lesser kudu and we are here with dakari who is our 18 month old male he's actually the first lesser kudu offspring we have had here at the como zoo and he's being a little shy this morning he doesn't want to come say hi to us we decided he just doesn't like the camera um so dakari was born here march 15th of last year he was born to nate and fiorda and he is part of the species survival plan for lesser kudu 
So we've talked about them before on Como Live. The Species Survival Plan is um, a, a breeding recommendation or a plan looking at the species as a whole. And our goal is we want to reach 95% genetic variability within zoo populations of captive animals in case we need to use those genetics in the future. So Dakari was, like I said, a successful offspring of that plan and he is now moving on. Typically, lesser kudu would leave their moms around 18 to 24 months, depending on if they're male or female. And so Dakari here has, he has reached his male maturity level. So he's going to also move to the Hempker Park Zoo in Freeport, Minnesota. And there he will meet a couple girlfriends and he will be part of the breeding population for the kudu SSP. So we are sad to see him go, but excited for him. Dakari, do you want to say goodbye to your loving fans? Huh? What do you think, man? Hi, buddy.